Good morning to you. Welcome to this time of worship on the first Sunday after Easter. Well, the Easter eggs have all been eaten, the hot cross buns are finished, and it's really back to the realities, sometimes harsh realities, of our lives. Our call to worship is from Psalm 139. I could ask the darkness to hide me, but even darkness is not dark to you, and light is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. We sing together that hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation.
And now let us pray. Gracious and loving God, the excitement of Easter is over and we find ourselves faced once again with the harsh realities of our world and our existence. And we discover that the old shadows of fear and anxiety are still there and that they haunt us. And we know that we have easily allowed ourselves to become overwhelmed by those shadows. And so as we come to worship today, we come with a renewed sense of our need of you in our lives. Our need for you to show yourself to us. Our need of you to speak to our hearts those words, peace be with you. And our need for you to create within our hearts a deep faith and hope in you, our living Lord. And so we worship you, our Lord and our God today. And we acknowledge that you are our Saviour and that in you alone is our hope and is our trust and is our life. So meet us in this time of worship, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is from the Gospel according to John, in chapter 20, verse 24 to verse 29. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. Thomas said to them, Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands, and put my finger on those scars, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Then stretch out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Well, I received a letter this week and it began with these words. Warm Easter greetings with the prayer that the joyous resurrection of Jesus keeps you filled with hope, faith and peace. Well, that's a great greeting and a wonderful way to start a letter. But the greeting left me wondering, what actually does it mean to live in resurrection faith? Am I supposed to be on some kind of happy high? That is not my reality, especially in the dark and the difficult times in which we live. And so I think we struggle as we try to live out resurrection faith in the difficult realities of our lives. This seemed to me to be part of the struggle that Thomas had how does he live with the hope of the resurrection, especially since he hadn't seen the Lord like the other disciples had? And his struggle is reflected, I think, in his words where he says, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, 
and put my finger where the nails have been, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. So let's talk about the struggle we have for a little bit. It has to do with the way in which the uncertainty and anxiety and deep sense of loss of the circumstances that we are in seem to fill our lives and dominate our thinking. It's almost as though darkness closes in upon us. It's like we are standing in the dark with one small candle. All we can see is our immediate circumstances. And so our lives have a way of contracting our world to that which we feel and that which we go through. And under these circumstances, experiencing the assurance that Christ is with us, that he's working within our lives, that he's using our suffering to bring out something new, is something that's very difficult for us to, leave, to live with and believe in. It seems as though the disciples themselves struggled in this way. For even though they had seen the Lord, yet still we find them meeting behind locked doors. And if you read ahead to John 21, there you see them still battling with a sense of purposelessness and aimlessness and emptiness within their lives. But as we reflect on the story of Thomas this morning, it seems as though there are two key things he teaches us about how we can live in the assurance and the hope and the joy that Easter and the res news of the resurrection brings us. So the first thing that we learn from Thomas is the importance of encounter with the living Christ. And by encounter I mean some kind of meeting with him, some kind of experience of him within our lives. This is what it is that Thomas is wanting and is desiring and in needing. And don't we readily identify with, with Thomas's need? I mean, especially in dark times, it's not always enough for us simply be, to be told that Christ lives. We want to experience his living presence for ourselves, to feel something of his nearness and to hear something of his voice addressing us. If we have a look at the faith of the, of the disciples, we see again and again that it was such encounters, such experiences of the living Christ that led them to live joyfully and with purpose and with faith. But how does such an encounter happen? It's not something that we can engineer. When we look at Thomas, we discover that on the one hand, he deeply seeks to meet the living Christ. This is portrayed in his words, which are not uh, an arrogant challenge or rebelliousness on his side but rather an expression of the deep desire of his heart to know Christ. And then on the other hand, he is prepared to wait, and to wait with the disciples. And a consequence of these two together is Christ appears and touches his life. And so if we are to experience Christ, us too, on the one hand, need to have a passionate and deep desire to meet him and to experience him within our lives. And on the other hand, we need to wait for him 
In other words, we need to have within our lives periods of silence and solitude and reflection and meditation. And that together with our deep desiring to know Him somehow brings us to a place where we know we are with Him and we meet the Christ who is both within us and within the world in which we live. That brings us to the second thing that we learn from Thomas. And this is the importance of belief. Now belief is what we accept to be true. But it is also about the trust that we have in God. And it also involves the way in which we live out in our lives that which we believe. Now when we have a look at Thomas, we see that belief is something that grows in him. It's something that is created within him through his experience of Christ. And so belief is the gift and the creation of Christ within us. Through our experiences of him, belief in his risen presence is generated within us. It is his gift, although it is ours to embrace and ours to accept. But there is something else about belief, and that is our belief nurtures within us an expectation that we will meet and experience Christ. And so, these two things constantly work together. You have experience of Christ producing belief and belief feeding our expectation that we will meet with Christ. And this dynamic working between these two draws us into a place where we know deep, deep within us in spite of the difficulties and the darkness of our lives, that Christ is present with us, that we are held in his hand, and that he is working out his purpose through whatever it is we are going through. And so this brings us to a place described by Peter in his first letter, chapter 1 where he says that we realize that we are receiving salvation, which is the goal of our faith, and that fills us with an inexpressible and glorious joy. And so I conclude. Living with an assurance and a joy in the resurrection of Christ is not a very easy thing to do, especially in times that are difficult and harsh for us. But we learn today that in experiencing Christ and embracing the faith that that experience creates within us, it seems to hold us in a place where we are in touch with the Christ that lives within us and the Christ that lives within our world. And so the joyfulness of Easter doesn't lie just in the fact that we know that Jesus lives and rose from the dead. It also lies in the experience that we have of being in Him through our meetings with Him, and through the faith that those meetings generate. And so in the story of Thomas today, we are called, on the one hand, to passionately seek meetings with Christ, to passionately desire experience of Him. And on the other hand, we are called to embrace passionately the faith and the belief that those experiences produce. Let us pray. 
our gracious God, we thank you so much that you understand the struggles of our lives. Thank you that you understand that we battle to live within this new life that you invite us and draw us into. Thank you that as you understood Thomas, so you understand us. And so we pray that as you were gracious with Thomas, be gracious with us. Place within our hearts a deep desire to experience you. And help us to embrace with enthusiasm and passion the belief that our experiences of you produce. And hold us in that place where we know that we live in you and you live within us. We will pray during this time for the church. And we ask, gracious God, that even though we cannot be together, that yet you would help us to remain connected to each other and to care for each other. And so somehow nurture and safeguard our fellowship, we pray. We pray, gracious God, for the health workers and medical professionals during this time. We thank you for them, for their dedication, and we thank you for the sacrifice that they make. We pray for each of them, gracious Lord. Protect them from infection. Grant to them an overflowing compassion for each person that they must treat. We pray that you would help them during times when they are exhausted and highly stressed. And we pray that they might be your living expression of healing love to each of us, to each patient that they treat. This we pray in the name of Christ our Lord and for his sake. Amen. And so in closing, let me bless you with the words of the greeting that was in the letter that I read. And so, may the joyous resurrection of Jesus keep you filled with hope, faith and peace. Amen. We close our service as we sing the song, It Is Well.
with me.